There are loads of energy products available for athletes these days, but how do you choose which is the right one for you? When you're working out your fueling strategy as an athlete, the number one thing you need to consider is how much carbohydrate to have per hour. But once you've got that established, the next important thing is to look at what sort of type of energy product is going to be most suitable for your needs. There's going to be practical and logistical considerations. There's going to be considerations around taste and preference. And so they, they all need to be folded in to help you make the right decision based on whatever activity you're doing. Now, there's basically four broad categories that, of energy products that most athletes will use on a regular basis. That's energy drinks or isotonic drinks, it's energy gels, it's energy chews, and it's energy bars. So we'll have a look at each of them now and discuss the pros and cons and how they might work for you in different scenarios. Isotonic energy drinks. These are probably the oldest form of properly formulated sports nutrition. They're generally made up of about a 6% carbohydrate solution, which means that half a litre or 16 ounces will contain about 30 grams of carbohydrate, a little bit of sodium to balance electrolyte loss and lots of water. They're, they're sort of the jack of all trades of a sports nutrition product because they, they deliver a bit of energy, they deliver a little bit of electrolytes and some fluids, all of, all of the three major um, costs of doing an endurance activity. Where energy drinks tend to be best is during short to moderate duration activities, so probably between 45 minutes and two hours, when you're working very hard, so you're breathing hard, chewing solid foods is difficult, and you just need a little bit of everything. You need a little bit of carbs, a little bit of sodium, a little bit of fluids to keep you going. Where they're not maybe so good is for activities that are much, much longer and especially in hot conditions because isotonic drinks can make you feel quite sick if you drink large quantities of them. The, the ratio of carbohydrate to fluid is not optimal. It's too much carbohydrate and not enough fluid. So you have to be careful if you're drinking them in large volumes for longer durations. So for shorter activities in the endurance world like marathon running, um, football training, anything like that which is going on for a shorter duration, they're going to be optimal. Gels are a great halfway house between a sports drink and more solid fuel. They've been around for a very long time and their formulation has hardly changed since the 1980s. A typical energy gel contains between 20 and 30 grams of carbohydrate and the precision fuel ones contain exactly 30 grams because that makes it really easy to figure out your fueling strategy based on either 30, 60 or 90 grams of fuel per hour. So it's just one less thing to worry about. Gels are extremely efficient when it comes to the amount of weight you have to carry for the amount of carbohydrate you've got. So unlike a sports drink where you're lugging around a lot of water with you, which is quite heavy, in a 50 gram gel packet you can get 30 grams of carbs, which would actually weigh over half a kilo in a sports drink. So when you're on the move, they make a lot more sense. Now, one of the biggest complaints people have about energy gels is taste fatigue if you use them repeatedly for hours and hours on end. So in very long events, it helps to use gels in conjunction with real foods or more solid foods so you don't get that kind of taste fatigue kicking in. The other time they're a bit tricky to use is if you're doing a sport like kayaking or mountain biking where your hands are on handlebars or holding a paddle and it's hard to rip the tops off and open them and eat them, that can make them a bit tricky to use. But overall, gels are definitely the most versatile form of sports energy nutrition available and it's why they're so so popular with athletes. In many respects energy chews are very similar to gels. They're basically just carbohydrates, they don't contain any fiber or fat or other macronutrients but they do have even less water in so they're a little bit more energy dense. They obviously, you have to chew them, as the name suggests, so they're a little bit more satisfying to eat, which means that when you're doing longer events, they can be a nice alternative if you're getting a bit sick of just slurping down gel after gel. For that reason as well, though, they're a little bit more difficult to use when you're breathing really, really hard, so tend to be better for those longer duration, slightly lower intensity activities. 
because they don't have as much water in them, they're even more efficient when it comes to carrying carbohydrates in terms of their, their weight. So if you are doing something self-supported and you've got to carry a lot of energy with minimum weight, they're also a good choice. So think about chews as being something you can use almost interchangeably with energy gels, but maybe they'll be better for durations of a, a slightly longer duration activities. Anyone who had energy bars in the 1980s will remember that they were as good at taking out loose fillings as your dentist. But luckily since then, sort of formulations have improved, recipes have got better, and energy bars nowadays really sort of blur the line between sports food and real good solid nutrition. They're often used in longer events than when you'd use drink, energy drinks or uh, gels or chews because when you're going for hours and hours on end you need to eat something more satisfying than just pure carbohydrate and sugar. They often contain a bit more fat, a bit more fiber and a bit more protein depending on the exact makeup that they're, that they're in. They also require washing down with fluids because they're going to be a bit drier and so you're going to need to have access to water or a dilute sports drink to take them with. But yeah for those longer activities or lower intensity intensity activities, energy bars are an excellent choice. They're also actually really good for um, fueling up before or after activities when you've not got time to prepare and make really good food. So if you're running late into a session in the evening and need a snack before you go, an energy bar can be a great way to make sure your carbohydrate stores are topped up before you get started. So I think energy bars of the old days had a bad rap they've got a lot better now and are actually another great addition to the the arsenal of sports foods that you can use to fuel longer activities the reality is most athletes will use a variety of different energy products at different times and for different purposes and there's no hard and fast right and wrong answers when it comes to fueling your activity the most important thing, the number one priority, is getting the right amount of carbs in per hour to fuel what you're doing. So making sure you understand how much is in the products is really important. Beyond that, it comes down to what's logistically viable for you based on what you're doing, what your taste preferences are, and what you can sustain for, for hours on end if you're going on a, on a longer activity. So you know, be prepared to experiment try things out in training and in small races to figure out what formats or what combination of formats is going to work best for you and then get on and run with it. Mm -hmm.